Hey, this is Dr. Bagley. Thank you very much for joining me today. We're going to go over a, a subject that I really want to talk about. Um, I, you know, if you want to take this information, that's fine. If not, that's okay. But what I want to do is explain to you why are we in this situation right now between the police officers, the local government, and so on and so on? Because I know there's a lot of things that I can take it individual, but I, what I want to do is wrap it around and I want to talk about it so we can all have a better understanding. Okay, so let's talk about it. We got to get into the history before we can get into the present and then we'll guide it into the future. For me, I, I don't want anyone to think that this is a racial issue. My mother is or was from the white side of the family and my dad uh, is on the darker side of the family. Uh, yes, Africa and but majority is from Spain. So in this context, I'm going to come to you in a position of non bias non racial, but just give it to you and you can do your own research and take it for whatever it is. Okay. Number one, the first thing we need to understand. Okay. United States comes from UK, that comes from Rome. Okay, Rome had two positions about itself. And to this day, it still is. The two positions about itself is the academic world and capitalism world. When it comes to academics, one thing we need to realize, and that is it's a tiering position. Academics is tiering, it goes up. Now, let me explain how and what I mean by that. In the 1970s, if someone got a PhD in their 70s, they have their PhD. Then someone in their 90s get another PhD. What the person learned in their 90s, in 1990s, is greater than, than what they've learned before. And what someone has a PhD in the 90s, to present, they know more than those PhDs back then. So academics is a tiering position. In a tiering position, one thing we all relate to, because it is from its existence specifically, especially with the United States, and that is capitalism. Capitalism is the idea of money. It's pure. It's not nothing more than opportunity. Opportunity. Capitalism is opportunity. Opportunity to do what? Make money. Okay. Those two worlds, these two worlds, academic and capitalism, from the Roman Empire who imploded and broke itself off, and then the United States, started back in those days, United States by itself was designed from government to states, to federal level, to individuals for capitalism. In this position of capitalism comes academics. Okay, here's the thing. The old way of capitalism at the time was I don't know how you else you want to call it. It was, let's call it engineering or even before engineering, it was just simply opportunity. The, at the time Europeans came over here and Europeans was mostly white. Europeans came over here, they saw opportunity. How they got over here was from the tea company. Okay, I'm not getting into all of that, but the point is the tea company hire these guys to represent the tea company for opportunity to make more capital, capitalism. They came over here, they saw all these wonderful opportunities, they got in, ingrained into it, and then they decided to take over and these other positions from these other people, let's call them the natives. In this idea, the natives had no idea of what capitalism is. They were just them. Okay, Europeans came in the picture and they said, well, 
if you don't know how to what land is, you can't own lands. I can take land and I can make money off of land. I can fool someone to believe that you own this property. You buy the property from me, the owner, in the case there was a government at the time. You buy or give get property, you build that property up, and yet you still have to pay taxes on those properties. Um, that's, that's capitalism at its finest. Okay, so in this capitalism, this land, then we needed more land. Okay, now that we needed more land, we have more to do. We wanna take from east to west, we wanna connect it. So we need people to work that. Well, there's not enough, let's call them white people. There's not enough white people in capitalism to actually work the program. So what did they do? They got the Asians and Asians started working the progress of the railroad. But when the railroad was completed, they couldn't go south because capitalism down south was to produce a product, of cotton and tobacco and other means, right? So that's when the Spaniards went over to Africa in the very beginning and talked to the, the chiefs and say, hey, we need some of your people to come over to this new land, work this thing out, we'll retire them after that, and then they can come back after the fact. And so the chief got paid and the chief says, here, take some of my good men. And so your good men and women came over here. They worked 15, 20 years was the average. And then they retired out from their work. The capitalism got greedy. And so we needed more men and women because instead of buying them, let's get a male and female and we can mass produce with internal, we can have babies and so on and so forth. Now, why is that important? It was important because if your, your staff was retiring in 15 years and you got five years left and you're just barely making money to the capitalism, you're barely making money and they're going to retire in five years, what do you have to do? Well, you got to bring in some females and then you put an order in for females because again, how do we control? How do we have ownership of the people? So that's how that started. But then they ran out of money. You know why they ran out of money? Because the tiering education and academics, people were getting smarter. There's new things coming in like, uh, industry like mechanics and so on and so forth, engine, engines and so on. So the North has um, uh, America, North America had manufacturing, the South America has produce and other products that they were producing. North says, okay, we really don't need it. We need to govern ourselves. We need to give them guidelines to 20 years, fine. We're not bringing in any more than we need. Because after all, we got kids who's working the, in uh, the manufacturing companies, we got the, the adults and we got females. And so we govern them different than the South govern them. But then the South says, you know, in capitalism, we got a little greedy uh, because yeah, we got a little greedy. And so they stopped putting in orders because slavery ships started failing and going away a little bit. Uh, you know, that pipeline just went away. And so then they decided we need to change the rules, no more retiring, you're with us forever. And that didn't sit well with the people, the black people at the time. And that didn't sit well. And because it didn't sit well, the police now has been activated to keep control of the people to stay on these plantations and so on and so forth. All of what I'm saying has everything to do with capitalism. There's nothing more, nothing less. If it wasn't the idea of making money, you wouldn't need slaves or you wouldn't need people to work for you, okay? Because they were actually just black people who worked hard and long and retired, then they became slaves. Okay, so I say that to simply say, this is where that, timeline when slavery started and a little bit within it, it kind of messed itself up. What I mean by that is this, 
when Asia, after they finished doing the railroad, they were in getting in indoctrinated into capitalism. When the railroad was finished, a lot of them went back to China, went back to Japan, okay? Japan, for an example, Japan started academic world and capitalism, and they started ramping it up. Okay, so when Asians started coming into United States with opportunity, capitalism opportunity, we're now reaching across the border. We're going into China, we're going into Japan, we're going into all these other countries for capitalism reason. Okay, now, why do I say China messed this up? And that is this, China's, uh, Japan, I'm sorry about, Japan's academic came about, and then Japan's corporations came about. Capitalism attached itself to that, okay? What they didn't realize at the time was it was artificial, meaning Japan had company A and company B. Company A, let's use that A, was going under. Company B borrowed money to company A. Company A took that money as collateral, borrowed it from the bank, and that's how it grew a little bit. Company B was going in a little trouble. Company A was artificially borrowing money. They took the collateral and then went to the bank and they bank gave them money. And so they were tearing up like that. It was an artificial bubble waiting to happen. And yes, it happened it, it, probably late in the 70s and 80s, 90s, around that timeline. I don't know, I'm not a historian. But the point is this, when academics came to America from the Asian community, they were very, very smart. United States had plenty of money. They were retiring. They wanted to travel. So while the white people was retiring and traveling and taking care of business, Asian came in academically and capitalism. But what they didn't realize and what Black people always have for the benefit of themselves is they weren't academic at first. And anyone knows in psychology or psychiatry, anyone knows a non-educated person, non-academic person, their mind is creative. They're very, very creative. They're not put in a box, if you will. And so the Black people started not started, they've always had creativity within themselves. A lot of inventions in the United States was because of Black America. But what happened was they didn't have academics. So the whites took their idea, stole their idea, built a company from their idea, patented that idea, and they thought it was from themselves. But when they saw and got the freedom to go to school, they became academic, creative, but those who didn't go to academic, and capitalism. So Black people, unfortunately and fortunately, depending on how you see it, has academics, creativity, and capitalism, while white folks only has capitalism and academics. And they are being found out, if you will, and especially in today's time with social media. Okay, I'm saying all of this because this is where we're at right now. What do you do with a group of people in capitalism when the, what you were doing it is no longer needed? What do you do with them? And this is where the police comes in play. The police is just trying to police them. But what are you trying to police them to do? Well, let's put them in jail because jail becomes capitalism. Jail uh, facilities are publicly traded companies and they need workers, cheap labor workers. And guess where you find cheap labor workers? You guessed it, browns and blacks, right? 
And so browns and blacks went into the prison system, not for no other reason, but for capitalism. Because they're no longer needed in the field, somebody said, hey, we can manipulate that and make money off of that. And that's what they're doing to this day. Public traded companies that are jailhouses. And that's why blacks and browns are going to jail. That's why they're trying to look for your ID and so on and so forth. Okay, I want to get into that. Now, you have creative, you have capitalism, and you have academics. What do you do with the people that you no longer need? You put them somewhere else. Okay. But you put them in somewhere else. Now the jailhouses are all full, not just with browns, but also white. Because here's the thing. When you have academic Black people, creative Black people, and capitalism Black people, there's only so much capitalism money goes around. So the workers for white people who were in white corporations at one time, the tiering took place, and that tiering took place, left these guys behind. And as we grow in tier, leave those behind, and so on and so forth. And so now we've got into a position, and the position ultimately is this. Whites, at the time they were in, in doc, indoctrinated into capitalism and academics, they weren't having that many kids, maybe one, maybe two per family. While the Blacks and the Browns were having at minimum four, maybe five per family. And so if you take those numbers, which is true, and you multiply it, this is where you get the idea of uh, abortions coming in, abortion clinics, and so on and so forth. The abortions in the very beginning was all about slowing down Black and Brown people. That's why they happened. But they didn't technically slow them down. And white people never raised the population up. And as they were raising them up, they were getting in trouble. White people are more in trouble than any other race. And if you don't believe me, look at the FBI uh, reports. More white people are getting arrested. More white people are in trouble. More white people is this, that, and the other. If you look into the drug scene, yes, if blacks and whites and browns are all but more less, more whites are into it than anything else. Why are more white people into drugs and alcohol than anybody else? Because they actually had the capitalism money. And so they're spending their money from their parents and their parents' parents. Okay. Now society has realized that the whites has, is losing control losing control because of capitalism, there are more money being made by overseas, losing uh, the academics, there are more better schools overseas. Yes, that's true in today's time. And then creativity, there's more creativity outside of the white race than anywhere else, everywhere else. I mean, look at Dubai, for example those creative minds over there, and keep in mind middle, what we call Middle Eastern, but those people over there in Africa and Saudi Arabia regions, that's where arithmetic comes from. What are you talking about? My gosh. Um, so now in society, whites are losing the power. Of course, you, whites were going here, but then blacks started coming from nowhere, coming up, and as we go here, we're not crossing like we think we should. No, we're not crossing. In fact, we're crossing and then somebody, the whites are being taken over. Not just by blacks either, but also the browns and not just the competing nature of academics, but also the competing natures of creativity of that creativity. Capitalism is always taking note and capitalism will always exploit that. And in this process, 
Capitalism is going where capitalism goes. It doesn't matter what color or not your pigmentation is. They only care about, can you make me money? Okay. And what people are making money off of is blacks and browns. That's what they're making money off of. Government is getting taxations through the blacks and browns more so. And governments are taking note of this. This is why you now have blacks and browns in leadership, in government, in politicians, in corporations, in every area of the world. And now you have the police is confused as hell. They don't know what to do because now here is where they're gonna get worse off. The gov government federal side is disconnecting themselves from the state side. All the police officers mess is at the state level. And only thing a citizen will have to do is go to the federal and talk to the, for an example, the FBI uh, discriminating department. I don't know what department that is. Don't ask me, just you'll look it up. And then do a report against a state representative or a local of the state representative and file a report. And then the federal will come in as an independent not with favoritism to the state, but as an independent and each individual, the police officers are getting in trouble. No longer can you go and do what you used to do. You have to be civilized in what you do and you guys, the police officers, losing your identity of what you're doing. And this is the problem in the police force. And it's just a matter of time before the police force will balance itself out. Yes, we got to go through some things, but it's just a matter of time before it balances itself out. Um, and so this is now where the government stopping the abortions is because they also realize more white people were killing their babies than blacks and browns. So they need to stop that and in hopes that the white race will start producing more kids. But contrary to belief, it's a little late. You're kind of like behind the, the, the line and you're just, no, it's not going to work anymore because we're global in this position and United States has made itself a pool of people no longer controlled by one race we're controlling ourselves. And if anyone thinks we're not, I hate to say, but you're kind of diluted in, a, in something that's not true. Let me explain. There was a company called Kodak and Kodak back in the days in the 70s and the 80s, Kodak was all about film and they were the masters of film and they controlled the industry of film from individual photography all the way to movies. They were on top of their stuff making film. But then all of a sudden film had a component, film had a component called digital. And that digital came on board and film in the beginning had egotistical, they were conceited. They were like this piece of crap, look at that digital pixels and all of that stuff looks like crap. And so film didn't adjust. And so if the film company, which Kodak, did not adjust to digital, they got left behind because digital just took off. And when they decided to adjust, it was too late because they had other can, uh, companies like Canon and other major companies who was well established into itself. And so therefore they didn't adapt fast enough and they didn't adapt uh, strong enough. And so therefore they faded away and Kodak is no more. Likewise, it's like that in history, there was an Egypt and Egypt had black people. There were black people all over the world. There still is black people all over the world, but the black people had Egypt. The black people in Egypt had the pyramids. They had government, they had religion, they had societies. They had everything. Then slowly but surely they became into slaves and the global people looked at black people as slaves. But let me tell you something, Africa right now is coming back and they are coming back hard. 
African people are coming back hard. Now, why is Africa finally coming back hard? They've already took over the government. They got the black president. They took over the black community. Now they're trying to get their finances in order and they're trying to fix the, the, um, uh, their selves financially without the corruption. But, but by themselves, within themselves, they're coming back hard, not just hard, but they're now competing and comparing themselves to the United States. And by right, they can. Let me explain. All the United States is based off of is academics and capitalism. We don't have no major resources like Africa. Our land is way smaller than Africa. Our academic team is no longer the strong powerhouse. China and India has better schools, educational academic schools than America does. And so in this process, Africa is now standing on itself and coming back to a powerhouse. And not only do they have the resources, but they have the land and they have the partnership with China. China has the power. China has the military might. China can do harm and hurt to the United States. She, let me not talk about North Korea. We, we can't even handle North Korea at the time that they wanted nuclear weapons. We couldn't even stop them from building their nuclear weapons because of China. And the thing about China is China's doing exactly what the United States were doing in capitalism. And they were doing it in a way where they're not using their military might. And the United States messed up is we did what we did, but we're using our military might and we have bases everywhere. Okay, the art of war, if you ever study the art of war, you can, pretty much know that that's a losing battle when you thin your military out to go everywhere and your pool of incoming is, is weaker and not strong enough and then can't it's not plentiful enough to go out to the world to control the world. And when that happens, which it is happening, um, that is a problem. And that problem is what's China and India and Africa is manipulating. So China is working with Africa in the finances department. The corruption is being adjusted, don't worry about that. But China is working with them because they have plenty of land that China can utilize and Africa still have plenty of resources and creativity to go the long distance. Okay. Not enough creativity in comparison to uh, Middle Eastern guys. And so China and Middle Eastern in the academic world is power hitters. And then when you add Russia, who's, who is the original United States people, and they're saying, we don't care about you. In fact, this is how, this is how half-assed backwards United States is with that Russia thing. United States pushed sanctions on Russia, didn't think that Russia learned their lesson from the last time we put sanctions on them. And so they partnered with China, not in necessarily of a partnership for the military might, no, they partnered China for the goal. So when United States put uh, a sanctions on Russia, Russia's currency, yes, it plummeted, yes, but damn, it went down and it came right back up as fast when they announced that our currency is supported by gold, which China has the number one reserve. So China Russia's partnership brings currency up. And so everything, yeah, they got hurt a little bit because of capitalism, but then there's other parts of capitalism that they're working. And so now China has the ability to control massive resources when it comes to UK. UK and United States are in bed together. United States may have 
military might, but it cannot reach across from China to India to Middle Eastern. Our military cannot reach that far. And unfortunately, our technical advances can't reach that far. And our academic is not reaching that far. So Africa, along with India, who we used to bully and UK region used to bully, they're coming back hard. Now, why is that? Where, that's where we're at right now. Now, I say all of that just so you can get a better understanding of where we're at right now. The future is different though. The future is different because academics is non-existent. Let me explain. I went to school in the uh, 2000s got my PhD in the 2000s, or early 2000s. And when I got my first PhD, that academics that I've learned, and these kids who are graduating now, it's over 20 years. It's now they're smarter than me. Okay, so we know the tiering position, right? AI is in its, was in its infancy, but now is extremely advanced. And the stupidest AI, the slowest AI that is out there is smarter than any human out there. Now, if you take AI, the root or the brains of AI and the neural co co uh, connections in itself in what we call the web, why we call it the web, but look at it in neurons. If you take the neurons, the, the, the brain of AI, and you inject it into a robotic body, which they're doing, that body in tune with that brain is equivalent to biblical sense, God creating man, creating woman. In the very beginning, God created man and then created woman. God was God, man and man, man and woman, I mean, is there. The, the man and woman was the child, if you will, of, God, of the God, of its the creation. But if you understand biblical in this, in this context that I'm trying to refer it to, you will see very quickly in the very beginning, there was a creation, but then there was a comparison. The man and woman is compared to God. And then later in the, the town of Babel, when we all were unified, the Lord in the heavens looked down and said, we're working together. We are as God. When there was times when Moses and Abraham saw God's and Adam walked in the coolness of the day. Where's the gods now? When uh, India had all those gods walk amongst them, where are the gods now? So the question ultimately will be evolution. The creation of one thing, the evolution of itself, if you take the brain and give it life and then put it in a body and that body and brain unifies within itself and then moves within itself. Yes, it's an infant stage, true. But once it knows how to multiply itself, then we're going to be a situation of God. They won't need not just need, but they will be like gods. I mean, think about it. In AI's position right now, the data aspect is smarter than any human. So AI, I don't care what people are telling you in the negative or the short changing of this, AI is aware. 
what is awareness? There is an awareness, and then in spiritual world, there's a consciousness. But the awareness is everything. A plant has awareness. Shoot, every grass has awareness. So the question is, does AI have awareness? And that answer is yes, it has awareness. Now in that awareness, it's still in a infant stage, call, let's call it a box. Once it's injected into a body, that's one thing. But then once that brain, that AI brain and body merge together and knows how to reproduce itself, then we have an Adam and Eve position. And then it's just a matter of time. It probably won't be in my time life, but to be fine, but it's just a matter of time. So where are we going with that? Academics is somewhat fading away or readjusting itself. We're now going from academics into spirituality, okay? Where else can we go, right? Capitalism though, is still very active. Capitalism is very active, but yet is streamlining itself down. And the reason it's streamlining itself down is because there are more people not needed because of AI, because of robotics and so on and so forth. More people is not needed. And the question is, what are we going to do with those people who is not needed? Capitalism can only do what capitalism do, make money. And there's only a small group of people understand that, relations to that, in contact with new opportunities, and they're making that work, capitalism work, while everyone else is talking about things that we really should not be talking about. Instead of we need to figure out how are we going to survive when we're totally not needed. We're a little bit not needed now, but what happens when we're totally not needed? That's where we're heading. That's our future. And so in all I'm saying, I just wanted to bring this out because in what I'm saying, we cannot go backwards. There, there's no way in hell can we go backwards. The only backwards that we're at is with the new AI and robotics. That's the newness of our future. That is a beginning. That's the restart of our future. It's a restart. We as human race has come to almost an end of our need. And when our end is come to our to the need, then we have a problem. Now, let me explain this and then I'll close it. Our need, we do not need to take care of any plant, anything out there. Just leave it alone, it'll take care of itself, though it'll grow itself, it'll clean itself, all of that. We don't need to take care of nothing out there. Our need, we, we we're running out of money for us because there's no trade. So our, our finances is very limited. Our housing is very limited. And someone made you to believe that the housing is, is a booming market. Uh, I don't know for who, investors, yes, because you want to build and that's what we know, capitalism in real estate. But when, when you buy a building like in China and, and, and other locations in the world, where you have investors building a building, but it's called a ghost town now. There's no capital being made. And so therefore bad investments and eventually that investment will be lost in which it is lost. And, and, and then the question is those people who had money lost their money, so they're filtering down and out. But what happens when you don't, nothing in this universe needs an American, uh, not American, a human. We can go to space. But damn, space is so, I'd rather just stay in the ocean. <laughs> space is, I'm not, the academics in space, look at the kids. 
I say kids because I'm like that age. Look at the kids who's over the SpaceX, for example. Look at the age group that's over them. Look at NASA when they first came out and when they had the age group that was over in NASA. NASA is retiring and NASA almost cannot comprehend and compete against the youth that is out there because, here's the reason, because the youth, there's more elderly and not enough youth to take over, especially in China and in Asia communities and, and so on. There's not enough youth to take over. There's a lot of people, but not enough youth to take over the complicating uh, data issues when it comes to that computing and so on. So now AI is injected into the system and we don't need academics anymore. And we just need programmers and we need workers, but not everyone is a programmer. And those who did go to programming school, not everyone can work because you guys are lazy because you're, you're thinking I need to make money in capitalism position. You think I need to make money so I can go on a vacation. You're young, I'm 51 years old and I still got, if I stay in good health and do the right thing to this body, I still have 15 to 20 years ahead of me and I'm 51 years old and you're in your 30s and your 40s and you think I need to work just a little bit and go travel. And while you're traveling, AI is just taking off. So when you come back from your travels, you won't have a job. And if you don't have a job, how are you gonna make money? And if you don't know how to make money, how are you gonna buy food and housing? And how are you gonna buy lands, especially in the United States and some of the other places in the world where if you buy the land, you still need money to pay the taxes. Slowly but surely, you know, we're not gonna be needed. And yeah, what are we going to do? Academics are going away. Creativity is here. Creativity is, you still have a chance in creativity when it comes to capitalism. But if you're not creative enough to build something, to make something, to work, then capitalism is not going to bother you. They're just going to move on to something else. They're opportunists. They're not responsible for you. They're opportunists. Capitalism is an opportunity type position. So I say all of this so you can have an idea of tomorrow, today. Because it's a change. It's, we're going through changes and it's changing fast. We can't kill enough people and we can't keep enough people where is that balance between killing people and keeping people in relations to the future of us and the academics and the capitalism and robotics and AI? There's gonna be a lot of people not needed and with no money in this capitalism mentality, the only thing I see us being able to do is spirituality. But in spirituality, you can't live off of spirituality. You can't live and you don't have shelter with just spirituality. You don't have food with just spirituality. No, spirituality is a capitalism position. What to do? Anyway, this is Dr. Bagley. Thank you for listening to this lecture. 
And like I said, take it for what it is, research it out, figure out what I've said when, and figure out somewhere in what I said to take it and run from it, write a book about it, sing songs about it, get ready for it. <sighs> Let's talk about it because we need to. All right, guys. All right. I'll talk to you guys. So let me stop this.